Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss binomial experiments. Binomial experiments are special kinds of experiments that adhere to these five principles. So we're going to cover these five principles, make sure you know them inside and out, and then we'll look at an example of a binomial experiment. Okay, so let's talk about um, the first requirement, that there are a fixed number of trials. Um, let's try to think of, as we're describing these, we'll think of an example of uh, taking guesses on a multiple choice exam. If, for example, there are 10 questions on the exam, that adheres to the principle of a fixed number of trials, right? If there are exactly 10 questions, we will make 10 guesses, so we know exactly how many guesses we have to make to finish the overall experiment. Each individual guess is a trial, and there are a fixed number of those. We'll say n is 10 in that case, so we use n to represent the fixed number of trials, how many trials there are going to be. Um, when would that be violated? Well, in some experiments you don't have that, right? You could say, for example, if you're taking a computerized version of the GRE, it may allow you to answer questions until you get a certain number right. So it depends on how long that takes you, right? If it takes you uh, an hour to get 20 questions right, then it takes you an hour. It might take somebody else 15 minutes because, you know, there's only going to be 20 questions before they get 20 of them right. And maybe for another person it takes um, 60 questions to get 20 right. So in that case, you know, uh, it's obviously going to be a different number of trials or a different number of questions for people who uh, have different ability levels, right? So that would be not a fixed number of trials. For us, we must know ahead of time how many trials there are going to be. In this case, our example, a multiple choice test with 10 answer choices, it's going to be 10 as our n, fixed number of trials. Okay, two possible outcomes for each trial. So again, when we take guesses on those 10 questions, each question is either going to be correct or incorrect, right? So when we take a guess, we'll either get it right or we'll get it wrong. So we can broadly categorize the two possible outcomes as success or failure. That's required in a binomial experiment, the word bi here indicating two, right? Two possible outcomes. Only two ways it can turn out. Sometimes when an experiment isn't naturally binomial, you can turn it into binomial. For example, you know, say for the multiple choice questions for each trial, let's say there are four answer choices for every problem. Obviously, there is not two possible outcomes. You could get the answer choice A, B, C, or D. So if you just looked at the answers that you chose, that's not binomial because you'd have a whole list of answers and there'd be four possible outcomes for each individual trial. But if you classify it as either correct or incorrect, you've turned it into binomial. You can do this with a whole host of experiments, right? So you know, rolling a die has six possible outcomes, but if you decide that three is the outcome you're interested in, you can do three is your success and all, any other number or all the other possible outcomes as failures. So it's easy sometimes to convert something into binomial when it naturally isn't. All right. Independent trials. For the independent trial scenario, you have to make sure that um, the outcome of one trial does not affect the outcome of the next trial. Right? So <clears throat> let's take, for example, the one we're talking about if you're taking guesses on a multiple choice test. Let's say I come to the first question, I take a guess, I go to the next one. You know, let's say, for example, on that first guess, unbeknownst to me, I got it right. Does that make it more or less likely that I get the next one right when I take a guess? I don't think it matters, right? Because I'm Christmas train. I'm not even thinking about it, I'm not even reading the problems, I'm just taking a blind guess. It would seem like to me that if I get the first one right or wrong, it doesn't change the probability that the next one is right or wrong. It's a completely random process. So in that case, the trials would be independent. All right, constant probability of success. On our example with the 10 multiple choice question quiz, as long as every problem that we come to has exactly four answer choices, the probability that I succeed at my guess is always going to be 25% or one quarter of the possible outcomes for any individual guess. And as long as that's true throughout the test, we have a constant probability of being successful, right? That would change, for example, if there was just one true false question. Let's say there were nine multiple choice questions that had four answer choices each, and then there was one true false question. Now it's only got two answer choices. The chance that I get that last one right when I take a guess would become 50%. It'd be different than the other problems that all had a 25% chance of getting right. In that case, we would not have a constant probability of success, and that experiment as a whole would not be binomial. All right, finally, the last condition is that we must count the number of successes, and we'll use a variable like x to count that. So let x equal the number of successes for the experiment, and we'll count that. Um, don't place a value judgment on the word success. It doesn't have to be a positive thing, right? You could count how many wrong answers you're going to get when you make these guesses on the test. And that could be your success for the, for the purpose of the experiment. It doesn't have to be something positive like you get it right. You could be counting how many times you get it wrong. As long as you define the success um, consistently, you know, you can make the success either of the two possible outcomes. Okay, that's it. So let's look at this example and see if this corresponds to a binomial experiment. Flip a coin four times and count the number of heads that 
turn up. Okay, so I'm going to flip the coin four times. Whether it's fair or not, we only have two possible outcomes, right? Heads or tails. I know exactly how many times I'm going to flip it. So I have a fixed number of trials, n, that's four. There are two possible outcomes, like I just said, heads or tails, right? Success or failure. In this case, the success would be defined as heads. That's arbitrary, but that's what they chose. Heads, failure would be tails, so two possible outcomes. Independent trials, if I flip a coin, it turns out to be heads, and I pick it back up and I flip it again, is it more likely to be heads or less likely to be heads the next time? I don't think so, right? The coin doesn't remember what just happened, so it's completely independent. I believe that's met. Constant probability success, well, whether the coin is fair or not, that probability is constant, right? coin is a fair coin, it's a 50-50 chance, heads or tails. Even if it was a biased coin, even if it's more likely to turn on heads, it turns out heads say 90% of the time, it'd still be constant. It'd be always a 90% chance that I get heads, so it's a constant probability of success. And then lastly, um, we're going to count the number of heads that turn up. X must count the number of successes. It seems clear that we're counting the number of successes as defined by this problem, heads being successes. Okay, so this is clearly a binomial experiment.